So now that you've installed Blue Iris and you probably want to add a few more cameras and you find your CPU usage is already through the roof, then you want to add the AI tool to do some person recognition and streaming, etc. But you just don't have the CPU power and you don't want to spend more money. Well, we're going to show you a few steps on how to optimize all your cameras and get them all in that computer without spending an extra dollar. Let's check it out. So first, the Blue Iris console can be a little overwhelming due to all the options, but it actually is very simple. Now, a lot of things that will change the CPU time down here is whether you're viewing that on, say, the phone app or the web app, because that takes additional encoding and decoding of cameras, and as well as if you are viewing it on the application itself. So typically, if you do want to minimize the CPU time is you can pause this live view. Otherwise, it has to decode these cameras and you can see down below we just jumped up to 90% just by turning on this view and different things will make it jump up such as additional movement and different analysis. So you really want to get it as low as you can because additionally, the lower you get it, the Typically on most processors, the less wattage, which is the less electricity going to be pulled. So one easy thing right off the bat you should go and do is come into the main menu and go to settings. And no, this is just a test little computer. I do actually have a license for Blue Iris. This was, a, I put on a test computer just so adding two cameras will really make it very high on CPU usage. If you'd like to see other videos for doing Blue Iris, definitely leave us a comment down below and maybe we can do some other tutorials on some easy steps of setting up and configuring Blue Iris. And one thing you would need to do first is in once you're in settings is definitely make sure you're on the latest version. They're always adding new features and new optimizations all the time. So go into cameras and the hardware accelerated decode. Typically, I do recommend an Intel based processor and it allows you to use the Intel decoding and it offloads a lot of the decoding of the cameras to the GPU itself. And you can come in here and play with all the different ones and compare which one might be better for you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick the Intel and we'll hit OK. And I do like to restart it. A lot of times when you're picking some of these features, you will need to restart Blue Iris. Now you can see already just by making that change, we did drop down to in the 50s and 60s. Now if you don't see an immediate jump, definitely come in here to the, the little, looks like the little stock price icon. And that's going to pull up your cameras and you are looking for HA, that's the hardware acceleration. It's going to show you which one you have and whether it's enabled for that camera. So you can see we have the Intel for both of these right here. Now, if you don't see that, you need to go to the camera settings by you can right click on the camera. And make sure it is set to default hardware acceleration decode. Now, if you haven't added a new camera before, there's a couple things I do like to do just to make sure that I get the best optimization out of all the cameras. So come in here and go to add new camera. We'll just call this the Rio 810A. Rio 810A it is a 4K camera with audio. We'll leave it as network IP. We will enable the audio. We'll enable motion detector and the big key is to enable direct to disk recording. That's gonna allow Blue Iris to just take the stream and record straight to disk without touching it, which is less CPU time. And at this point, you may be going, whoa, there's a bunch of stuff to fill in. Well, your typical cameras, say your Amcrest, Dahua, the Real Link, several different ones that do support on VIF, you're just going to put in the IP address and it will scan and pull them in automatically, which is pretty cool with this newer version of Blue Iris. 
So once you do put in your password and IP address for the camera itself, and typically once you do that, I just hit the find inspect. Now this did not pull in all the information. You can see it got a 404 on the OnVIF. So this is a real link camera and I find that if you put in port 8000 and hit find inspect, and you can see now it pulled in a lot more information with the profiles and everything. And this can vary per camera. But the cool thing is it pulls in the profile mainstream and then it also pulls in the profile substream. But we'll get to that in a minute because that's a different step. But we'll leave this as default. We didn't touch anything here. I was just showing you. Leave everything, hit OK. Now, one thing I do like to change is I do not enable overlays. I like to let the camera put the overlays. And what the overlays is, that's gonna be your date, the time, the camera name, etc. You might as well let the camera send that over and not deal with Blue Iris having to put that on the actual video. Uncheck that, leave all these as default. The only thing I do make sure is that the default hardware accelerated and GPU is turned on and just hit okay. Now do make sure you don't have the live view paused, otherwise you won't see the camera immediately in the display. Now this should put us really high on the CPU usage after this, because this is three 4K cameras on this little Celeron processor, and it's really gonna push it to the limit. So you can see we're here at 91%. I do wanna check and make sure that we are having acceleration on the three cameras. So how do we get this down? On CPU usage. Well, the real easy way is let's go into the camera settings and we'll go to video, hit configure, and you'll notice there's an option it pulled in the substream. And it should automatically, for most OnViv cameras, it should pull in the substream URL or path or whatever you want to call it. And it allows it to pull in instead of having to process that 4K stream, it may process just a 640 by 480 if you pop the VGA style stream. It's going to be very low resolution, but it still allows Blue Iris to process that stream, do motion detection on just a tremendous amount of less pixels, which is less CPU time. And the cool part about it is. Blue Iris will automatically switch between high and low stream when it needs to, to show you the video and recording, etc. And we'll notice the CPU time, once it re-updates, drops down to say 60%. Now let's do the other cameras and see what we can get down on the CPU time. And go to video and configure. And you can notice we're dropping down in the 50% mark already, even down to 41% once things start to stabilize. So we'll go ahead and check this one out. Camera settings, 22%. All in this little Celeron CPU. So you can imagine if you were doing this on say a nice size i5, i7, et cetera, you could easily put so many different 4K cameras and have no issue at all. Now we're even down to 17%. And if we really even paused the live view where you're just wanting it to record, nobody's really watching it right away, the CPU time will even drop even further. So it's really cool and that's gonna be the biggest CPU saving right off the bat is the substream. It's still gonna record those full 4K or whatever, 5 megapixel, 8 megapixel, whatever it might be that you have as your mainstream, it's going to re still record that to your disk and show it when you are showing it in full screen when you need to. But if you do it in a grid on, say, the web GUI or the live, it's only going to show you those smaller substreams instead of taking those really big pictures and then scrunching them down and causing a bunch of CPU utilization. It takes the smaller ones from the substream of the camera and brings them straight in. So in this example, I do have the just main streams enabled. I don't have the substreams. I want to get the CPU time back up. I'm going to show you another feature that will definitely help out with CPU utilization. Now I'll show you the payoff real quick is I'm going to take this camera that says front, go to camera settings, and I'm going to enable the limit decoding unless required. 
Now this is gonna vary per our camera, so definitely check it out, make sure it works and test it. So we're gonna turn it on on this camera, let it re-update, and we're gonna check the CPU time. Now you'll notice immediately it's dropping down into the 20s just by doing that limit decoding. And remember, I don't have the substream enabled. Now, what you're gonna to have to look for to see if your camera can do this is go into the camera status and make sure on the frames per second that it does say slash 1.00 or very close to it. Now, I do have this one set as a very high bit rate, so definitely that does add to the CPU time. Now, if yours is showing 0 0.50, just don't try that to turn it on. Now, there is some settings you can change in the camera GUI itself. So we're gonna open up the camera GUI. Now, you'll want to jump over to the video configuration. And this is where some things can really help out if you've got a lot of cameras. If you don't need 25 frames per second, you can drop that down to say 15 frames per second. And you could also drop down the bit rate. You could play around setting the bit rate to variable. Now, one thing, if you do change some of these cameras to H.265, that does have less bandwidth over your ethernet, but that's usually not a problem is the amount of bandwidth over ethernet but it does additional processing, especially on some CPUs don't have H.265 decoding built in. So typically you wanna leave them as H.264. This one says H.264H, which is high profile. It's just the same, just a higher profile because of the higher bit rate. But the key you're wanting to look for is when you do set the frame rate of say 25, which is the highest on this camera, you do want to set the frame interval or it will be called say the iframe. There's a couple different names for them and you want to set it the same as the frames per second. And that's going to allow you to turn on that limit decoding. If you do not have this feature, then you will not be able to use it. Say some of the real link cameras do not have this ability. If you go look in the stream settings, this is pretty much what you get for on most of the real links as a recording of this video. Unfortunately, I wish they would let us do the iframe keyframe setting. You can see this, it just tremendously helps out the CPU time. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one on as well. And you'll notice the CPU time is going to drop down a good bit just with these cameras due to that limit decoding. And again, Everything affects the CPU time. I can pause the live view of it and just let it record. And just to show, we'll set both of these for substream and let them pull back in and re-update. And we'll even pause the display. And just like that, you can see two 4K cameras processing in Blue Iris ranges anywhere from 8% down to 15% because it's crazy what you can do with the optimization because if you just typically have say one 4K camera in this little underpowered computer, it struggles just to do one full 4K stream. But now we're recording two of them at 7%. 8%, that's nuts. Plenty of CPU time to pull up the web GUI, do your AI, whatever. Now there are a few other little minor ones that you can get further CPU time out of it. First of all, you should probably do this one anyway, is you're wanting to run it as a service and that way that's just gonna start up and it's gonna start your recording in case your computer reboots or whatever, cause this is Windows and it's gonna reboot with updates at times. Now there's another option that can really help out if you wanna watch the live view of things. We talked about, of course, maybe you don't wanna pause it, is you can change the limit live preview rate and it doesn't affect the recording to say five frames per second. And that should allow you to still be able to see things and of course you could change that to 10 or whatever it might be so you can still get some motion video, but it definitely helps out on limiting the CPU. 
And that's about it pretty much, you know, because this is Windows. Now outside of Blue Iris, you're gonna have like say the disk defragmenter running. You may wanna choose to disable that. Uh, different Windows updates and different other services. There's some different debloating tools out there for Windows that can help remove those different services because you're really trying to minimize just what's running automatically on Windows. And yeah, it is Windows, unfortunately. So again, if you want to get some more additional Blue Iris tips videos, definitely leave us a comment down below. We'll do some different tutorials of Blue Iris and whatever it may be, and just some easy setups for viewing all your cameras. So I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. It helps bring new projects and videos to the channel each week. If you're not a subscriber, smash that button, hit the bell icon, and y'all take care.